We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. Amen. God bless you all. What a wonderful opportunity it is to be in the house of the Lord and uh, give all the glory to God uh, for what he's done in this season and what he's going to continue to do throughout whatever the next few months have for us. I'll be reading tonight from Galatians chapter 1, starting at the 11th verse. Galatians chapter 1 and 11. It says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly jealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Amen. I want to draw your attention to verse 15. It says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, I want to preach for a few minutes tonight about being today, this morning, about being blessed by my boundaries. Blessed by my boundaries. Amen. Why don't we put our Bibles down and let's join together in prayer right now in your homes. Join up with your family or with us. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your presence, for your anointing that's on this service today. I pray that your spirit would have its way today. I pray that the Holy Ghost would move in every one of our homes, every one of our hearts, that you would speak to us from your word, God, that we would hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Verse 15, which I emphasized, says, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by His grace, who separated me from my mother's womb. I believe that there is a separation that takes place. There is a, a calling that takes place for every individual, no matter the vocation, no matter the ministry, no matter the, the life experience or the background, that there is a calling that's been placed upon every living soul to perform a task for the kingdom of God. I don't, I don't say that casually, I don't say that in broad or general terms, but I mean that specifically, and I mean that intentionally, that every single person that's born is born with a purpose for the kingdom of God. Whether you be a person who has is, who is grown up uh, not having known Jesus Christ, not having known the truth, and you have just recently, in, in the last few months or years, been been filled with the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, received the revelation of the mighty God in Christ, and have walked in this truth just recently, or whether you have been raised by this, by this great message of truth and you've been raised in this great, this great way of, of apostolic living, whatever your background may be, whatever your story may be, I, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life, that God has a purpose for your life, that there is an appointed task that God has placed upon you from the, time, uh, from, from the time before you were born, from the time you were in your mother's womb. Paul talks about it here in Galatians chapter 1. He said, the Lord who separated me, that it was God who separated me in my mother's womb, who, who, who called me out while I was still in my mother's womb. This is a phrase that, that Paul uses again and, and, or used before in Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. He said, I, I, I'm Paul the apostle who was separated from my mother's womb who was separated from my mother's womb, who was set apart, set aside, who was appointed and called from my mother's womb. 
I want to draw your attention tonight to Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 1. It says, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And then in verse 5 it says, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. The Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. We see here in multiple scriptures that God had a plan for these men in scripture here. God had a plan for the prophet Isaiah while he was still in his mother's womb. In verse 1 he said, Who called me from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. That the Lord would speak and call the name of Isaiah before he had ever even been born. That God would form him. That God would form him to be his servant with the sole purpose of of Isaiah fulfilling the calling and the purpose of a servant in the kingdom of God. Paul the apostle separated from his mother's womb to be a servant of God in the kingdom. Amen. That word called that's used here in Isaiah 49, it's a technical term which means appointed to a task. Appointed to a task. I want to, I want to point out two things here. Number one, that there is a task. There is a task at hand. There is a mission to be accomplished. And it has been in place. It has been, it has been a part of God's plan. It has been a part of His mission since before you and I were ever born. Since before the authors of this great gospel message were ever born, there was a task to be performed. And that task was to reconcile the lost world with the God of their creation. Amen. This is the task that God has laid out before us. And the second thing is that we have been appointed to that task before we were born. From the very beginning of time, from the moment of conception, when that heart inside that little embryo began to beat for the very first time, when, when, when blood cells and, and tissue and bone began to form inside that small embryo in the womb of a mother that God had already appointed that, that small embryo before, before, before their, their brain had formed, before their, their lungs had formed, before their, their heart had formed, before their digestive system. And their nervous system had formed that there was a task that that small child that was being being created and formed that that child was already appointed to a specific task within the kingdom of God. Amen. A calling is more than a conversation. It's it's more than just as Isaiah put it, God mentioning His name. But that word called it literally means an appointment. It literally means an appointment. It is more than God just trying to get our attention. It is more than God just reaching out to us verbally. But it is God assigning us to a task. It is God placing spiritual and eternal responsibility upon the shoulders of humanity. I want every one of us here this morning to receive the revelation of the responsibility that God has placed upon our lives, not just in the time we've spent sitting on a church pew and not just in the last few months spending this these, this season in quarantine, but that from the very beginning of our life, God has had a responsibility and an appointment that he has set upon us. And it is his will that we would rise to the occasion and step into the anointing that God has placed upon us and do exactly what God has created us to do. Amen. I want to draw your attention to Jeremiah chapter 1. In verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Hallelujah. Jeremiah is hearing the word of the Lord here. He is hearing the voice of God. The Bible says the word of the Lord came unto me. The voice of God speaking to Jeremiah, confirming 
and, and, and affirming Jeremiah's calling and his anointing, telling him that before I formed you, not just when I formed you, not just from the time that I formed you, but before I ever formed you, I knew you. Before I ever created you, before I ever, I ever placed you there, before the moment of conception, I knew you. I knew your heart. I knew your mind. I knew your soul. I knew your personality. I knew your disposition. I knew your attitude, your giftings, your talents, your shortcomings. I knew where you would fail. I knew where you would succeed. I knew where you would supersede and where you would fall short. And it was before that that I knew you. I comprehended you. And I, before I even brought you out of your mother's womb, I chose to sanctify you and ordain you. God speaking to Jeremiah in his humanity, in his frailty, in his shortcomings shortcomings and his weaknesses telling Jeremiah that I knew your shortcomings I knew your weaknesses I knew where and when you would fail and before all of that before I even brought you out of your mother's womb I ordained you and I sanctified you Hallelujah. I want every saint of God, every sinner, every backslider to hear me tonight. And I, I, I want you to hear me this morning. I, I want to make it clear to you that before you were formed, before you were born, before you were, you were growing inside your mother's womb, God knew you. God understood you. God loved you. God had ordained you. God had already laid out a plan for your specific life I, I want to I want to push back against the lie that would say that there is a there is a cookie cutter generic default blueprint that every single Christian should walk in that every single Christian has the same giftings and the same talents and the same abilities and we're all going to do the same things with the Christian life that we live what I want to preach this morning, I want to encourage you that God has blessed you. God has called you. God has anointed you since before the time you were born, since the earliest moment that you can imagine. Before you were formed, God knew you, and he had a plan for your life. I want to talk for a few minutes about a few phrases that come up a few times in Scripture. In Jeremiah 1 and 8, at the conclusion of this conversation, the Lord speaks to Jeremiah and he says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. If you were to go to Joshua 1 and 5, you would find a similar phrase as the Lord speaks to Joshua at the, at the uh, inception of his ministry. And he speaks to him and tells him, As I was with Moses, so will I, so I will be with thee. In Acts chapter 18 and 10, the author of Galatians, the apostle Paul, hears the word of the Lord. And God speaks to him and says, For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. There are three things these men had in common. The prophet Jeremiah, the Israelite leader Joshua, and the apostle Paul had three things in common. And that was that at this point in time when the Lord spoke to them, they were walking in their God-ordained calling. They were doing exactly what God had created and called them to do. In, Je in Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah is responding to the call of God. And he is preparing to walk in the anointing that God has placed upon his life. And the Lord assures him. The Lord comforts him and tells him, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. Joshua is standing on the precipice of his, of his season of leadership, following, following the footsteps of Moses before him. And the Lord speaks to him and says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And in Acts chapter 18, Paul setting out on his ministry in the New Testament, and the Lord speaks to him and says, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. 
What I want to tell the church this morning is that God has planned, God has a plan for your life. There is a will and there is a way that God has ordained you to walk in, that God has ordained us to walk in. And the truth is, as long as we are walking in that way, as long as we are living in obedience to His will, and we are doing exactly what God has created us and separated us and called us to do, that God will not forsake us. God will not leave us. God will not abandon us. But God's pattern from the Old Testament to the New to today is that if men and women would walk in obedience and fulfill the call of God upon their life, whether they be a prophet, whether they be a leader, whether they be a missionary or a preacher, that God will not leave them in their calling, that God will not forsake them in the appointment that he has placed upon their life. God will not abandon them while they work at the task that he has ordained them to perform. I want to tell first church this morning that God has called us. He has appointed us to a task. There is a mission to be fulfilled. There is a work to be done. And if we will step into that role and walk in the anointing that God has placed upon our lives collectively, God will not leave us. God will not forsake us. As he said to Jeremiah, Joshua, and Paul, I am with thee. I am with thee. I am with thee. Hallelujah. I want to draw your attention back to Galatians chapter 1. Where I read my text to the scripture that I've emphasized already. It says, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. God who separated me. Who separated me. That word separated means a point set apart to mark off by boundaries to appropriate to oneself. God is appointed, set apart, marked us off with boundaries and appropriated us to himself. When God called us to come out from among them and be ye separate, he was not giving, a, giving us a list of specific do's and don'ts, but God was telling us that he has appointed us. He has set us apart. He has marked us off with boundaries, and he has appropriated us to himself. Hallelujah. God has done all of that with a purpose in mind, with a mission in mind. Hallelujah. I want to talk for just a few minutes here tonight. Before I make my close, this morning, before I make my close, about the power of living within your boundaries. The power of living within your boundaries. It is so easy to look at the Christian life as a list of do's and do nots. I had a conversation just Friday afternoon with a, with a friend of mine who, who was just baptized just a few weeks ago. And in conversation, we began to talk about the church and the operation of the body of Christ and, and what a blessing it is to be a part of the community and be a part of the church and be a part of the blessing that comes with that, a part of the called out ones. And he, and he said to me in passing, he said, you know, <clears throat> I've, I've never heard anyone talk about the church like this. I've never heard anybody talk about being a Christian like this. Anytime somebody talks about being a Christian, it's always about what they can do and what they can't do. I want to tell you this morning that, that, that being a Christian, that following after Christ, that, that walking in your calling, it's, it's about more than Samson not being allowed to cut his hair and not being allowed to drink wine, but it's about the power that resides in living within your boundaries. It's about the anointing that will come upon you when you choose to abide inside the boundaries that God has used to mark you. God has not placed boundaries around his church to separate us, to, to seclude us, to make us feel lonely, to make us look weird. But God has placed boundaries around us so that we might walk in the fullness of our anointing, so that we might walk in the fullness of our calling in Christ Jesus. The boundaries 
that he's placed around us, they're not a curse. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's not what I can do and what I can't do, but it's a blessing because it allows me to walk hand in hand with Christ in the mission that he has placed me in. It allows me to walk under the fullness of the anointing that God has appointed over me. It allows me to walk in the full authority, power, and dominion of the name of Jesus that I carry in baptism. It allows me to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost when those around me are walking after the flesh because I'm living within the boundaries that God has used to separate me because I'm living within the boundaries that God placed on me before I was ever born because I choose to stay within the boundaries. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God, that that word separated, it means that God has appropriated us to himself. He has set us aside for selfish reasons. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And he wants you to be a part of it. He's got an anointing for you. He's got a ministry for you. And he's got blessing for you. If you'll stay in the boundaries that God has placed upon our life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God has marked us off with boundaries. He has drawn clear lines. There is a clear delineation between the children of God and the children of the world, between those that walk after the Spirit and those that walk after the flesh. I want to tell you this morning that it's time for us to walk in boldness within the boundaries that God has placed us in. We ought not to hang our head. We ought not to be ashamed. We ought not to be embarrassed because the boundaries around me are not a reason to be shamed the boundaries around me are not a reason to be embarrassed but they give me power they give me dominion they give me authority you want to know why Paul can stand up and preach on Mount Car and, and, and preach about the, the to the tomb of the unknown God you want to know why why Elijah can stand on a mountain and preach in the face of, of hundreds of false prophets you want to know why Satan Samson can take on hundreds and thousands of adversaries without falling because they're walking within their boundaries, because they're living within the boundaries that God has placed around them. You want to know why Peter was not afraid to stand up and preach in the upper room because he was living within the boundaries that God had placed upon him. You want to know why John could be boiled in oil and cast out on an island in the ocean and still write the revelation of Jesus Christ because he lived in the boundaries that God had placed around his life. Hallelujah. 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 You want to know why David, as a young man, unproven and inexperienced, could face down a nine and a half foot giant named Goliath because he had lived his life within the boundaries that God had placed around him. As a young man with no one watching, David had chose to live within the boundaries that God had placed upon him before he was ever formed. David chose to walk within the boundaries that God had separated him with. Those things that made his brothers hate him. Those things that made his father cast him aside. Those things that would make Saul seek to kill him. David chose to live in that place so that he could have everything that God had promised him. Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe this morning to the very core of my being that there is, an, there is an anointing that rests upon true apostolic Pentecostal people that make the conscious and, 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 and sincere decision to walk within the boundaries that God has placed around them. Not people that, not, not people that try to get the bit in between their teeth. Not the people that try to get the, the reins out of the hands of Jesus. Not the people that try to get more of the world and less of God. But the people that walk in joy within the boundaries that God has placed upon them. 
people that choose sincerely and passionately to live within the boundaries that God has placed upon them. I'm telling you, there's an anointing, there is dominion and authority that rests upon that body of people. And I'm not talking about a generic body, but I talked tonight, this morning, about the people of First Church, the people that have chosen to be separate, to be called out, to walk in the appointment that God has placed upon their life. Hallelujah. You want to know why this church is not afraid to continue to have church, are not afraid to preach the gospel unfiltered, unhindered, unedited over the airwaves and over the internet when people all across the country are trimming down their messages and trimming down and, and trying to pretty up and cut the rough edges off the gospel that Jesus preached, off the gospel that Peter and Paul preached because we walk within the boundaries. We live within the boundaries that God has placed upon us. And when you live in those boundaries, Boundaries, there is authority and there is boldness that comes upon you. Hallelujah. Paul could stand before Roman and, 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 and Jewish leaders alike and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them without fear or without favor. Jews who wanted to kill him. Romans who didn't care what he had to say, who thought he was a fool, and yet he could preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear and without favor because he had made the decision to live within the boundaries that God had placed upon him. Hallelujah. As I come to a close this morning, as the musicians come, my desire this morning is to send a call to the people living in the boundaries. My desire, my, my calling this morning is to send out a clarion call to the people living within the boundaries. This season... Of quarantine and isolation from your church family and your earthly family and your friends and your job and your school may have you questioning what it really means to be set apart. May have you feeling negatively about what it really means to be marked off by boundaries. The word separated means that we are appropriate, that God has appropriated us to Himself. He has appropriated us to Himself. First church, what that means is that God sees value in us. God sees value in us. And He cares, He cares so deeply, not just about us as individuals but about the task that he has appointed us to. He cares so deeply about the task that he has appointed this church body to, every individual, every believer, that he has set boundaries around us to make sure that we're separate, to make sure God has made sure that his greatest commodity, the people of God, his children, his bride, are set apart by boundaries. Not just so the world sees that they're different, but so that they know they are different. This is not a message of exclusivity. This is an invitation today. If you're not living within the boundaries, if these last few months have given you the temptation and the opportunity to slip outside the boundaries, Start living out on the edge where God has called you to live. I want you to hear what this young man is preaching today. A young man without wisdom, without experience, without much seasoning. I want you to hear me and listen to me, if you will. You are a commodity to the kingdom of God. God's kingdom runs on currency. And that currency is people. That currency is people. God doesn't use people because he has to, but God uses people because he wants to. And God wants you to be a part of his kingdom. God wants you to walk in the anointing and the calling that he has placed upon your life. God wants you to reside inside the boundaries that he has placed upon your life. He's not trying to run you off. 
He's not trying to smoke you out. God's trying to set you apart. I wonder this morning if every one of us could open our hearts and open our mouths right now, lift up our hands and our voices together. And if we could pray and say, Lord, Lord, help me to see my boundaries as blessings. God, help me to, help me to look around and take stock of where I'm living, of the things I've been doing, the actions I've been taking, the life I've been living. Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see my life, my habits, my decisions as you see them. And God, help me to see my boundaries as you see them. God, help me to see my boundaries as you see them. Help me to see them as the blessings that they are. Come on, First Church, that's it. Would you lift up your voices in your home right now? Come on, take your spouse by the hand. Join up with your children. If you're by yourself, find a place to kneel and pray right now. Jesus, help me to see the boundaries around me as blessings. Come on, not burdens, but blessings. Not burdens, but blessings. Come on, First Church, that's it. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, pray with me this morning. Pray with me this morning. God, is a, He's appointed us to a task. He has called us. He has set us apart with purpose. Come on, it's time to walk within the boundaries that He has set upon us. Come on, it's time to live with the dominion and the authority that we haven't felt for two or three months now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice and pray in your home right now. Come on, as the chorale sings, why don't you take stock of your life, take inventory. Come on, make sure that those boundaries are clear. Make sure that your marriage is within those boundaries. Make sure your children are within those boundaries. Hallelujah, hallelujah.